This is a little how-to video about how one can do the string or thread wrapping on the shank of a mouthpiece for a serpent, although the same techniques can certainly be used for doing similar kinds of seal wrapping on other musical instrument mouthpieces, everything from woodwinds to other early brass instruments. This is the way I've been doing it, and I thought I would share it. In this picture, uh, there is the small end of the bocal for a serpent, and behind it are three serpent mouthpieces. The one on the left is one that I wrapped by a different method using super glue, and the one in the middle is a serpent mouthpiece made by Berger Serpents in uh, Switzerland, and I'm going to put a caption up here with their website. They do have uh, an illustration for doing a similar kind of wrap to what I'm going to show in this video. And then the uh, mouthpiece on the right is one that somebody else wrapped. I have no idea who. It's a very loose wrap, as you can see, a lot of gaps, but it, it works just fine. I'm not going to show that method either. So in this video, I'm going to wrap all three of these uh, more recently acquired mouthpieces. The one on the left is a 3D printed serpent mouthpiece, uh, which I have a video on making a 3D printed serpent, and this is one of the several mouthpieces I made during that project. It does need some sort of uh, wrapping to make it have an airtight seal with the bocal of the serpent. And then the middle and right ones are two more boxwood mouthpieces um, purchased from Christopher Monk Instruments in England and they came without uh, the wrapping on them. So all three of these need to be done. I'm going to start with the plastic one because it's white, and it'll show the contrast with the thread I'm going to use a lot better than the other ones. Now one thing I wish I could have done better, um, I tried shooting video of the process, but uh, with the limited apparatus I have for holding the camera in a good position where the lighting is right, the glare is minimal, uh, it's not in the way of me seeing the thing I'm working on. Uh, I just wasn't having any success with it. So I ended up having to do a little bit and then pick up the camera, take a picture of the progress at that point, put the camera down, do a little bit more, pick up the camera again, and so on. So I have a bunch of slides instead of a continuous video. And for the most part, I think it will illustrate what I'm trying to talk about, but it's not going to be as good as it might have been if I could have shot a video with all the other variables in place and optimized. So the wrapping of the mouthpiece shank is there to make it fit tightly enough in the receiver of the instrument, which is on the bocal in the case of a serpent, to have it fit in tightly enough that it doesn't just rattle around and fall out, and also that it has the thread packing or wrapping to make an airtight seal because the instrument won't work well if there's even a, a pinhole air leak. So it's really an air seal and also just a way to make make the mouthpiece fit firmly into the uh, receiver. Depending on how much diameter there is on the shank of the mouthpiece and what the inner diameter is on the receiver, you can end up with just a very tiny gap to fill, like a little scrap of paper could go in there and do the job. Or you might have more of a gap to fill and you need something thicker. Uh, people use various types of threads. Uh, some people use dental floss, like waxed dental floss, which works pretty well. Uh, I'm just using good old generic sewing thread with a high polyester count, but there is still some cotton in it, which isn't optimal. I think it would be better if you could use a an entirely polyester thread. Luckily, this part doesn't get all that wet. Uh, the moisture happens further down the tubing. So... I'm going to illustrate this with the green sewing thread that I have in these pictures. For the uh, white 3D printed mouthpiece, the shank was a bit smaller than the other two mouthpieces, and 
I started out with four feet of thread. Uh, figured that would be enough, but then I needed to make a dual layer of the thread to get enough bulk. So I needed to redo it with a longer length. Uh, then with the other two mouthpieces, I cut, I think, about five feet of thread. And that ended up being just about right for those. So you probably want to do a dry run if you're going to follow these instructions. And start with a longer length than you need and then you know, make a note of how long you actually need for any other ones you're going to do. I start by sticking one end of the thread up through the end of the shank, up through the throat of the mouthpiece, out through the top of the cup, and then over the edge, using a little piece of tape to tape the end in position on the outside of the mouthpiece cup. Pretty much any kind of tape can be used. I think a masking tape or a painter's tape or, uh, like I did here, a little piece of black vinyl electrical tape works better than something like, you know, a scotch tape. Here's a view of the thread taped to the outside of the mouthpiece cup going down inside the cup, out through the bottom of the shank, and then the major length of thread is off the picture here. Next I take the thread coming out of the end of the shank and pull it up sharply along the entire length of the shank and most of the length of the cup and then make a loop and have the thread come back down towards the bottom of the shank again. With the thread pulled tight coming out of the end of the shank then I put another piece of tape here to secure the loop and keep that thread pulled uh, tightly up from the bottom of the shank pinching the loose end of the thread between the shank and my thumb to hold it in place, I start wrapping it with my other hand going away from me here. You could really do it in either direction, but in this video I'm showing it being wound away from me. In other words, clockwise the way it would look if you're looking at the end of the shank. I make the first two or three wraps very tightly and once that's done, that holds the uh, piece that I was pinching with my thumb. It holds it so I don't need to use my thumb for that anymore. And now I can use that hand exclusively for holding the mouthpiece securely while I do the wrapping with my right hand. Now, here, because I know I'm going to have a double layer of thread, I'm deliberately leaving a little bit of a gap between adjacent wraps of the thread at this point because I'm going to put the second layer down sort of in between the first ones to bulk it up a little bit. But if you have a tighter fit, you don't need to do that and you want the, the wraps to be pretty tight together. Here I've worked my way up towards the large diameter end of the shank. Uh, the spacing here is a little bit more than I really wanted to have, but I was aware that I was going to be making this video, so I exaggerated a little bit. The spacing over towards the right, where there's just a small gap, was closer to what I really wanted. So I undid this a little bit and made it a little tighter. Because I'm doing a second layer of wrap, I pinched uh, the thread to the shank with my thumb, as shown here, and then brought it back down to the right edge of where the wrapping started in the first place, repinched it there with my thumb, and then did another series of wraps, fitting the new wraps in between the old wraps until I get up to uh, the point where I'm shown in this video. And um, the length of thread I had here was just barely long enough, and I couldn't actually get it all the way to the left as far as I wanted before I ran out of thread. So that's why it's better to have a bit excess thread than not enough. Now what has to happen is I need to have a way to secure the loose end of the thread. And the way that this method utilizes for that is to pull it underneath the already done tight wraps around the, uh, the shank. Uh, so how do you get the thread to go back under there? Well, that's why this loop is present on the left side hanging over the cup in this photo. It's a little hard to see, but under my thumb in this picture you can see the loose end of the thread being clamped to the side of the mouthpiece cup 
and the thread is passing through the loop. On the bottom of the shank, it comes around, goes over the thread of the loop, then it goes through the loop and under the thread on the top side of the loop. While holding the loose end of the thread still between thumb and forefinger of my left hand here, I use my right hand to undo the tape that's securing the first end of the thread to the side of the cup, and then pull the thread out through the bottom of the shank so that it's just hanging to the right like it is in this picture. So here's the nifty part of this whole process. Still anchoring or holding the the second end of the thread up against the side of the cup as it was in the previous step, I use my right hand to pull the loose end that was the original end of the thread down at the at the right end of the uh, shank and I pull that forcefully to the right in this picture and what that does since the loop that was formed is now collapsing and the loop is being drawn underneath the tightly wrapped threads and when it does that it forms a new loop from the thread that I'm pinching in my fingers and starts drawing that new loop underneath the tightly wrapped threads so it's one loop and another loop intersecting in the middle of those where they join the two loops are being dragged underneath the wrapped threads and you keep doing that until you can kind of squint and see where that bulge is under the wraps until it gets about to the middle of the wraps and then that's a good place to stop pulling. The only thing left to do then is just snip off the excess thread. I like to leave just a little bit but um, that allows in theory to grab it with a you know a needle nose pliers or something and make small adjustments uh, but you could trim them off flush. Uh, I find it's also difficult to get a scissors or something in there um, to trim it off right at the next of the wraps without just digging in with a knife or something which would possibly damage the uh, shank. So an important next step is to make sure that the work that I've done is actually done. Uh, does it fit in too tightly? Does it fit in too loosely? Do I need to undo it and start again? Uh, that can only be determined by sticking it into the serpent bocal, uh, the receiver of the serpent bocal, and I'm starting to put it in in this picture. And then the next picture shows it with the mouthpiece all the way in to the point where it's tight enough and it won't go in anymore. Okay, to reinforce the steps, I'm not going to show them all here, but I'm starting out with one of the boxwood mouthpieces here. Once again, I've got one end pulled through the shank, up through the mouthpiece, over the edge of the cup, and taped into place. And here I have the long end of the thread pulled back up along the shank and along the side of the mouthpiece cup, a loop formed and pulled tight and taped into place pinching both sides of the loop thread uh, between thumb and forefinger with the shank in the middle, I'm getting ready to start the first wrap down at the end of the shank. On this mouthpiece, the uh, gap between shank and receiver was smaller, so I just did a single layer wrap. So I started it with the wraps very tightly together and did not make a second pass like I did with the white plastic mouthpiece. And here I've got the wraps done and the ends pulled to draw the intersecting loops under the wrapped threads. And then I trimmed off the excess, again leaving just a little tiny bit at each end. And rotating the mouthpiece, here's what it looks like on the opposite side of the shank. And here's test fitting that mouthpiece into the Serpent's Bocal Receiver. And for the third mouthpiece, I'm just showing the uh, the final step and then test fitting it. I was a little sloppier here because it was the third one, and instead of getting more skilled, I was getting more impatient. But it still worked out just fine. And then the uh, three just-wrapped mouthpieces are all sitting here for comparison. <laughs>